Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and the 11th Circuit both rule it's okay to pray in Jesus Name. But a federal judge in Virginia bans people from praying in Jesus Name and how one church in North Carolina is fighting back. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus' Name show, the fastest half hour in Christian television because today we're gonna do three things. We're gonna report the news, we're gonna discern the spirits, and we're going to pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready? Let's get right to our first story. This comes to us from the Metropolitan News Enterprise. We're gonna report a victory in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in California. Prayers in Jesus' name at the opening of Lancaster City Council meetings do not violate the First Amendment's Establishment Clause, according to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. A three-judge panel ruled unanimously that the prayers in Jesus' name are constitutional based on a city policy of inviting members of all faiths and creeds to participate by applying to the city clerk and then to determine the content of their own invocations free from government interference. The prayers have largely been Christian but have also included prayers from a metaphysicist and a Muslim and a Sikh the lawsuit was filed by Shelley Rubin, the widow of the late Jewish Defense League head, Irv Rubin, and he had won a ruling about 10 years ago that banned Jesus prayers in Burbank, California. But in 2010, they sued again against Lancaster, California, and this time they lost. When the mayor of Lancaster, California, Rex Paris, allowed Jesus prayers. One pastor that was invited prayed with these words, in the name and the precious and holy and righteous and matchless name of Jesus, I pray this prayer, amen and amen, God bless you. Well, because the pastor said the word Jesus, the plaintiffs argued that they were upset and offended by the mention of Jesus and they would never attend another city council meeting unless such references were forbidden. So they asked the government to censor the content of the pastor's prayer but the government refused. So when the Rubens sued and lost in 2010, of course, they appealed. And last week, here's the great news, they lost again at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals who ruled unanimously it's okay to pray in Jesus' name, not just in California, but in 11 states or territories on the West Coast. The brief reference to Jesus in the pastor's invocation, the court said, was not sufficient to find an establishment clause violation because there was no evidence or argument to suggest that the invocation proselytized, advanced, or disparaged any faith. And the plaintiffs did not contend that it had this purpose or effect. Judge Dimerd O'Scanlan, writing for the Ninth Circuit, said, the district judge was correct in holding that the 1983 Supreme Court case Marsh versus Chambers does not ban all sectarian references in legislative prayer. O'Scanlan explained that the city had implemented a proactive policy of neutrality, broadly soliciting the participation of clergy of all faiths and accepting members from all who wish to do so, whether the city invited them to or not. In a footnote, the judge rejected the idea that Mayor Rex Paris is at the center of a campaign to transform Lancaster into a miniature Christendom. The court noted how Mayor Paris instead went out of his way to recruit members of non-Christian faiths to give the invocation and take turns doing that. And then apart from that recruitment, he had no role in setting the invocation policy. The judge went on to say that the mere fact that most of those who had given invocations are Christians had no bearing on the constitutionality of the policy. The plaintiffs, he argued, uh, made no showing that favoritism rather than simply demographics were responsible for the preponderance of Christian prayers being offered. Two other judges concurred in the opinion, the case is Reuben versus City of Lancaster, and we have a great victory in this. So that's the news. 
I didn't embellish it, I just read it as it was explained to me, but let's discern the spirits a little bit. And God bless Shelley Rubin, right? Uh, she's very passionate about her Jewish faith and, and good for her, but when she sues to stop Christians from praying in Jesus' name, she now is apparently the one violating the First Amendment, or at least the government would be if they listened to her. When, when the government steps in and says, you can't pray in Jesus' name, then the government is imposing a demonic spirit of tyranny upon the First Amendment rights of Christian pastors. If Shelley Rubin were invited to give the invocation, she ought to be able to pray to Adonai or Yahovah or pray a Jewish prayer or invite her rabbi to do that if she doesn't wanna do it. But instead, she wants the government to impose a non-sectarian religion on all of the people and censor everybody's speech. Well, that's kind of the opposite of free speech. That's government censored speech. So no wonder uh, the courts ruled against her. I think this is a great victory. I wanna pray with you a scripture from Colossians 3 and verse 17. And before we get to our next story, we had a very similar ruling in Florida, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, but why do Christians pray in Jesus' name? What is the spirit inside of the Christian pastor who, who magnifies God, gives praise and thanksgiving to God in the matchless name of Jesus Christ? I think that's the Holy Spirit inside of the pastor because he's obeying the scriptures in Colossians 3.17, the Bible says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So when the scriptures command us to pray in Jesus' name, the pastor should be free to obey God, even if he wants to disobey uh, some government edict or some you know, anti-Christian complainer. We need the freedom of conscience. Would you pray with me? Let's take a moment and pray about this together. Father in heaven, we worship you and we glorify and magnify your name in the matchless name of Jesus. And we're so grateful to you for this victory in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that would give religious freedom and restore the right to pray in Jesus' name, not just for all of California, but for all of Washington, Montana, Nevada, uh, 11 states or territories. Give this victory to the rest of America now. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, a similar ruling in the 11th Circuit out of Florida. We're, vic we're having victories for the right to pray in Jesus' name. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. God bless you in Jesus' name. We do have an active petition right now on FactsCongress.com to protect military chaplains' right to pray in Jesus' name. Many of you know my story, I'm not gonna go into that, but Congressman Walter Jones did introduce new legislation to forever protect military chaplain's right to pray in Jesus' name. He needs some co-sponsors. We want you to fax your congressman, it's free. Go visit faxcongress.com and sign that petition today for military chaplains. Our next story comes to us from the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. This is reported by highlandstoday.com. The appeals court upholds the right to pray in Jesus' name at city council meetings. The 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, just like the 9th Circuit on the West Coast, now the 11th Circuit is in Florida, Georgia, uh, I wanna say Alabama, and they ruled last week that it is constitutional to pray in Jesus' name before city council meetings at Lakeland, Florida. They rejected atheist arguments that this practice somehow promotes Christianity, and Lakeland is one of a number of local governments across the state 
that opens its meetings with prayer. The prayers are often by, led by clergy, but the Atheists of Florida, Inc. filed a lawsuit in 2010 challenging Lakeland, Florida. But now, last week, a judge, a three panel, excuse me, a three judge panel of the 11th Circuit ruled with the city. They said the court, uh, the court ruled that Lakeland has acted legally after putting in place a 2010 policy that included a process for selecting speakers from a wide range of congregations or faiths. The policy said that commission members and members of the public would not be required to participate. So it's optional prayer and anybody can give the prayer. The court ruled the selection procedures of the invocation speakers invited to deliver an invocation at the Lakeland City Commissioner's meetings pursuant to policies and practices, do not support the atheist contention that Lakeland attempted to exploit the prayer opportunity to proselytize or advance or disparage any one faith or belief. So it's okay to pray in Jesus' name. Also, the judge declared moot any arguments about the Christian prayers that were offered before the 2010 policy. The atheists of Florida argued that the city's actions violated the state and federal constitutions, including the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. In a file, a brief filed last year, it tracked prayers given at commission meetings since 2002. Prior to the filing of this lawsuit, all but one of the cities of Lakeland's prayers included explicitly Christian references, the complainers said. The sectarian references have been exclusively or almost exclusively Christian. In response, the city argued, there is no record. The city has never provided a speaker with an invocation or edited the speaker's invocation words or prevented a speaker from giving a particular invocation. Simply put, the city's exercised no control whatsoever over the words that flow from the speaker's mouth. But the atheist want the government to control the words coming out of the speaker's mouth. The atheist identified no church, sector, religion, denomination that receives aid from the public treasury. The court in Atheist versus Lakeland agreed with a 2008 ruling in Pelfrey versus Cobb County, which was in Georgia, which ruled that Jesus prayers are okay for all of Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. So here's a map of the United States, right? And sometimes these people try to appeal to the Supreme Court, but if the Supreme Court doesn't hear these cases, then it's decided by district courts. Now here's a map that shows 11 different district courts, just one step below the Supreme Court, where a three judge panel or sometimes uh, an 11 or nine judge panel will hear a case and decide it for that region. So if you look at Florida here, you see the 11th circuit governs Florida, Georgia, and Atlanta. They say Jesus prayers are okay. Also on the West Coast, that you see the Ninth Circuit, the largest circuit, says that Jesus prayers are okay. Also the Seventh Circuit in Indiana, uh, in Hendricks versus Bosma said that Jesus prayers are okay. So three districts, the 11th, the 7th, and the 9th have all ruled it's okay for city council members to allow pastors to pray in Jesus' name. The problem is in the Second Circuit in New York and in the Fourth Circuit in Virginia, North Carolina, the courts have ruled the opposite, that it's not okay to pray in Jesus' name. And in fact, here's a scripture, they are banning the name of Jesus the same way that they did in the Bible in Acts chapter four. Do you remember when the Sanhedrin called in Peter and John and they ordered them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus? But Peter and John answered and said, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you rather than God, you judge and they obeyed God and they disobeyed men. They kept on preaching and teaching in Jesus' name and they were punished the same way that some courts are doing. And in our next segment, we're gonna talk about one of those examples in the state of North Carolina and Virginia, the Fourth Circuit, where they say it's not okay to pray in Jesus' name. Before we go to this break though, I wanna pray with you. Would you pray? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name and I join everyone in this audience to lift up the name of Jesus in prayer to you that you will rectify and establish freedom of religion. In New York and North Carolina, all these places where it's illegal to pray in Jesus' name, thank God for the victories in Florida and California, but the nation is divided. Father, we pray that the Supreme Court will hear the right case and rule it's okay to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be right back. We'll talk about Virginia and North Carolina next. Don't go away. Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. 
Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I want to thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let's get right to our next story. This comes from Pennsylvania, Virginia. And I think this is reported by the Richmond Times Dispatch. Following a legal battle that began in September of 2011, a federal judge ruled Tuesday to permanently bar the Pennsylvania, Virginia County Board of Supervisors from allowing sectarian Christian prayers before its meetings. U.S. District Court Judge Michael Urbanski issued the ruling last week Tuesday, giving a victory to atheist complainers, Barbara Hudson, and the American Civil Liberties Union of Virginia, the ACLU or the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, who represented Hudson in this case. The anti-Jesus complainer filed a lawsuit in September of 2011, and the judge had issued a preliminary injunction in February ordering the board to cease holding sectarian prayers that mention Jesus Christ during meetings. Pending the case's outcome, his ruling last week now makes this injunction permanent and that is exactly what Hudson and the ACLU sought. The case law in this jurisdiction is crystal clear, said the ACLU director, Rebecca Glenberg. Governments may not allow sectarian prayers at their meetings. The supervisors represented by attorney and state Senator Bill Stanley were not pleased with the ruling. Obviously, I'm disappointed, said Turnstall Supervisor Tim Barber, who served as the board's chairman during most of the case in 2011 and 2012, but I'll abide by and respect the decision. I expect the board to speak out soon and decide what our next move is gonna be. So did you hear that? They're debating whether to appeal this case. We need to take action and call them. He said, if it was up to me, I would contest it, but it's up to the board and the board is gonna take a vote. Unfortunately, our country is going the wrong way. Well, do you think our country might be going the wrong way when they ban Jesus prayers? I need everyone to take action today. Visit this website, pitgov.org slash bos.htm. Again, that's pitgov.org slash bos.htm. And what you're gonna find there are the phone numbers of all seven board supervisors. Here's a picture of the board of supervisors. They're debating whether to appeal this case and fight it at the appeals court level, maybe all the way to the Supreme Court. Can they allow Jesus prayers? We need them to vote the right way. Would you call, log onto this website. Again, it's pitgov.org slash bos.htm. And you have the seven phone numbers. Some of them are home phone numbers of these Board of Supervisors members. Call them and ask them to vote for Jesus prayers. Make the phone calls. Make seven phone calls today and ask them to vote for Jesus prayers. Let's discern the spirits a little bit Here's a scripture from Proverbs 29 and verse two. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. What is the spirit inside of these supervisors who are standing up for Jesus? And what is the spirit inside of this judge who bans the name of Jesus? I think one has the Holy Spirit and the other is full of the devil. And I'll just call it that because that's what it is. It's a demonic spirit of tyranny that would suppress and punish people who pray in Jesus' name. You can't do that in America. And Satan, you cannot have our governments in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that you would evict the evildoer and invite the Holy Spirit. 
And Father, forgive the sins of these atheist complainers. They don't know you, they don't know any better. But Father, I pray you, as you forgive their sins, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to gently persuade them to invite Christ as Lord of their heart. And when they do that, they will know the value of praying in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're gonna take our last break. And when we come back, how one church in North Carolina is fighting back for the right to pray in Jesus' name. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps with the Pray in Jesus' Name Show. We have a victory to report, or maybe it's not yet, from WCNC Television in North Carolina. A Salisbury, North Carolina church is getting ready to show support for the Rowan County commissioners who are facing legal battle because they allow prayers in Jesus' name before county meetings. The ACLU, the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, sued Rowan County commissioners after they voted five to zero, and they stood with 82% of the voters to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. But now, a Christian pastor, Bill Goddard, is buying 40 billboards around the city to support the right to pray in Jesus' name. The billboards will go up throughout Rowan County in the next few weeks as a show of support to the county commissioners who are now facing a lawsuit because they allow meetings to open with prayer. The ACLU says that this type of prayer is too specific, that Jesus somehow violates the first and 14th amendments of the Constitution. But Pastor Bill Goddard of Cornerstone Church disagrees. The Constitution gives us freedom of religion, not freedom from religion, Goddard said. That's why the pastor says he tried to give the commissioners $10,000 in church money to fight the ACLU suit. But when he found out that was against the rules, he decided instead to buy the billboard. So here's a picture of these billboards that are gonna go up. He's got 40 of them going up around Rowan County. And he says, I just don't think we should be against other people praying to the God they wanna pray to. And he's hoping these billboards will make his message heard. I hope and pray that it would generate enough publicity that we just keep the law of the land free for everybody. But the ACLU fought against this. By refusing to obey the law and insisting on opening prayers that are specific to only one religion, the county commissioners have created an environment where citizens of different beliefs may feel alienated. Let's show a short video clip of this story from WCNC. This is coming to a highway near you. And it's yellow and red and blue because we wanted to be in your face. The billboards will go up throughout Rowan County in the next few weeks. A show of support for the Rowan County commissioners now facing a lawsuit because they open their meetings with a prayer. I ask this to name my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The ACLU says that type of prayer is too specific, that it violates the First and Fourteenth Amendments. The pastor at Cornerstone Church in Rowan disagrees. The Constitution gives us freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. That's why Pastor Bill Godair says he tried to give commissioners $10,000 in church money to fight the ACLU suit. When he found out that was against the rules, he instead decided to use the church money to buy the billboards. Forty of them are in the works. I just don't think we should be against other people praying to the God they want to pray to. And he's hoping these billboards will make sure his message is heard. Well, I mean, I, I would hope and pray that it would help generate enough pub publicity that enough people would speak that, that we could just remain the land of the free for everybody. 
in Salisbury. Michelle Bowden, NBC Charlotte. God bless you in Jesus' name. Here's a scripture we have from Joshua 6, 5. Isn't this exactly what the pastor is doing now? He's standing up and taking a stand, and we need to support and stand with in prayer, Pastor Bill Goddard from Joshua 6, 5. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people will shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall flat, and the people will go up ahead, every man straight ahead. He is sounding a trumpet, and in Jesus' name, those walls are gonna fall, and we are gonna have a victory. Someday, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals is gonna overturn that bad decision by previous court cases. Well, I wanna pray with you, and then we're gonna preview tomorrow's show. Uh, in fact, let me just say on tomorrow's show, tune in the same time, the same channel, we're gonna review how the, another judge is throwing out an atheist lawsuit against the 9-11 cross. We're gonna see how Medicare may start to pay for sex change surgeries, how the CEO of Starbucks says that Christians should boycott Starbucks, and how less Bible reading is causing a moral decline across America. Let's take a moment and pray. Would you pray with me as we close this show? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name and we support good pastors like Bill Goddard of Cornerstone Church in North Carolina. God bless the city commissioners, uh, the county commissioners of Rowan County, that they would continue to have courage and defend the right to pray in Jesus' name and free speech. Father, we pray not that any government religion will be imposed, but that instead the government will fulfill its role to protect our free speech and everybody's right to take turns and express their freedom of religion. Father, we welcome the atheists to come and say good luck, but when it's our turn, we must be allowed to use the word Jesus in our prayers. Father, I ask your blessing, not just on the pastor and on the commissioners, but on all of the Fourth Circuit, overturn that bad court ruling uh, in previous cases where the judges say it's not okay to pray in Jesus' name. Lord, give us victory in Jesus' name, amen. All right, I wanna encourage you to write to me today. Would you reach out to us? Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. Send me an email today. God bless you in Jesus' name. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.